Jones at all, what you've probably heard about him has, to say the least, not been flattering. For instance, one of the most recent articles written about Jones called him, quote, a tortured soul, antisocial, an inventor who has devised a three-part plan to bring the United States to its knees. The article also quotes Jones as saying that the only invention he thinks the public would use correctly is a cyanide pill. They can either take it or not take it. In every television show you've ever seen or every article you've ever read about Arthur Jones, that is in fact how he is depicted, as an eccentric millionaire tyrant who lives in the middle of central Florida, who brooks no interference and tolerates no mistakes. And that, perhaps, is Arthur Jones' biggest complaint, that he is often misrepresented by the media, not just him, but everyone else as well. There was an article written by a man in the Sentinel Star a few months ago, if you're referring to that, the man is a liar. The man quoted a lot of things that were not stated. Uh, he twisted things. Uh, he did a typical media job. When you have people like that who give an interview and then just uh, lie, take things totally out of context, make up quotations that were not made and publish them, then you get an image that's built up that's uh, totally untrue. Well, one of the things that worries me about what we're doing is that I have seen what a lot of people have done, what the networks have done, what many newspapers have done, and magazines, misuse of power. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to uh, create a network of false information. I don't want to uh, put out information that is biased and prejudiced and prejudicial to any class of people or, or individuals. And uh, that gives me a great deal of concern. Uh, insofar as what the media has to say about me, I'm not responsible for that. Uh, as I said before, they're liars. Nobody likes to hear the truth about themselves if it's unflattering, least of all the media. But Arthur Jones does not mince words. In fact, he is brutally honest. He feels that the media should report facts, not make judgments. And he's not shy about saying so, as I recently learned. What will you do with this empire that you are building? Well, I wouldn't call it an empire. You see, you called it an empire. Mm -hmm. That's a judgmental What's statement. That's a judgmental <laughs> statement. What is, what is the definition of an empire? Okay, let I'm me building, retract that I'm and start again. Okay. Okay. You come along and say, I'm building an empire. You know? mm -hmm. That was judgmental. Let me retract and start again. What will you do with the facilities that you are building here, which are perhaps the best in the United States? Best in the world. That's a judgmental statement. That's not my opinion, by the way. That's the opinion of people from the networks who come here and see it. But I don't know, Pat. That's uh, kind of like pre-planning a fist fight. Uh, television is in a state of flux. The networks, the three networks, ABC, NBC, and CBS, have, for all practical purposes, had a monopoly not only on programming, but on the ability to, to slap things, and they've taken advantage of that. They've had this monopoly now for about 30 years, but that's changing. You're in public broadcasting. Cable is coming in, the superstations, the Ted Turners. If Ted Turner survives, and I hope that he will, he has, I understand, from reading uh, financial problems. The magnitude of those financial problems, I don't know. But if Ted Turner survives, and I hope that he will, then five or six years from now, there will be a hundred Ted Turners. That will break the monopoly of the networks, and it can only be good for the country. Uh, I won't be good for the networks by their opinion. But personally, I couldn't care less what's good for the networks. I think they've had it too good too long, and I think that present television, uh, the lack of uh, meaningful programming, whatever that means, uh, today. But I think that most people are agreed that there is no meaningful program programming on television today. Certain things are amusing, certainly. But uh, I am one of those people, everybody says it, but I am one of those people who seldom watches television. The reason I don't is there isn't much on there worth watching. 
Television has a lot of critics, but not many of them have the skill or the money to change the medium. Arthur Jones has both. He has invested more than $70 million in what he calls the world's largest television complex. The 170,000 square foot structure located in Lake Helen, Florida, houses 35 studio cameras, 72 videotape recorders, and 23 one-inch recorders as well. Also, some of the most advanced equipment made, including a strobe digital video effects system worth one quarter of a million dollars by itself. By the end of this year, Jones hopes to be operating his facility 24 hours a day, five days a week, producing more than 200 hours of programming for cable or syndication. By 1982, the Nautilus Television Network hopes to be producing more than 1,000 weekly programming hours, back six times more than anyone else. The equipment is only the best, and the crew is first class. Why is Jones going to this effort and this expense? I'm doing it for my own amusement, my own entertainment, my own interest. Uh, being quite honest about it, you're not in your present position to help people. You're there to help yourself. You're not there necessarily to hurt people either. I'm not implying that. But people do things for self-interest. Now, that's not evil. Everybody in the world is out to feather their own nest, so to speak, one way or another. Some people do it in a criminal manner, robbing banks, selling drugs, whatever. Other people do it in an honest manner, uh, and in between. There's nothing wrong with self-interest as long as it doesn't hurt other people. I'm not a philanthropist, and uh, I'm not a do-gooder. I don't think that I know all the answers to all the problems. I'm not even sure of many of the problems. But it is obvious to me that nobody else knows the answers either. They have piddled away, to use a polite term, trillions of dollars trying to solve the problems of the poor and the problems of the city and the problems of the school. And what have they done? They've destroyed the cities, they've destroyed the government, they've destroyed education, they've destroyed everything. I have no complaints against people so long as they're responsible and as long as they don't step on my toes. Now, I don't go through life stomping on other people. I don't want people stomping on me. Uh, I would like to leave other people alone. I would like to have them leave me alone. That's all. I'm interested in I'm going to live a certain length of time, and then poof, I'm gone. And it never was. The, uh, so uh, I would like to live my own life as quietly and in as much peace as possible without bothering other people and without people bothering me. That's not always possible. But that's what I'm after. Is this man really the eccentric and opinionated tyrant that the media say he is? Probably not. He is no more eccentric than you or I, but he is occasionally opinionated and abrasive and sometimes arrogant. Arthur Jones, however, is also a step or two ahead of the rest of us. He is a genius and a millionaire, a man who lives for today, but keeps his eye on the future as well.